So in recent years, I've become a lot more calculated with the things that I spend money on. Of course, this hasn't always been the case, and friends of mine that have known me for a while will tell you that I was always pretty quick to hop on the bandwagon of something new, even if it was a somewhat educated purchase, something that I thought I could get a lot of use out of, I was often victim of the hype train. Whatever the newest thing was from the coolest company, I usually tried to get my hands on it if it was financially feasible. In recent years, that has become less and less the case because of other priorities with money and being an adult and having bills and a mortgage and things like that. I am not quite so freely just buying things willy-nilly. Now, I made a video which you may or may not have seen that I'll link above here where I talk about why I'm not buying any new guitar gear in 2021. Now this doesn't mean that I'm not committed to investing in my craft and in what I need to be able to deliver great tracks to certain artists or producers, etc., etc. It's just that I realized I'm in a really good place when it comes to gear and I can do everything I need to with what I have. The only limitations I think that I have truly are the ones in my head. And if there is something that I need in a pinch, I have friends that I can borrow it from and things like that. But anyway, Anyway, check out that video if you haven't already. So when it came time to redo my pedal board because frankly the flat board I had been trying to get to work or just wasn't working, I started doing my research. I started looking into certain companies. I started looking into some newer offerings. I started looking at how big of a board I would need or how small. I used things like Pedal Playground and Pedal Board Planner, which I'll have linked in the description below, as tools to kind of see what layouts might would work. Now, I have a pretty good idea of what I want in a pedal board and kind of the form factor that I like, so that helped me out. I worked on about what size I would want. I knew I wanted it to be smaller in form so it would be easy to use if I was also using something like the remote for the Kemper and also something that wouldn't be a hassle to tote even just to small gigs or small sessions and things like that. So I landed on a board from what's one of my favorite companies and that's Mono Creators. Now they have not sponsored this video in any way. I paid full price for this. Mono doesn't even know that I exist. I did, however, do a video of the Flyby, which is my favorite backpack. I'll also link that above here. And I think they just generally make great cases. However, I'm also a big fan of this pedal board. So as you can see, this is a 18 by 13 inch Mono Creators small pedal board. Now, for some of you, you may not think this is actually that small in this frame. It actually looks like it's a decent sized board, and that's because it does have quite a few things on it. Now, this is a very compact board. As you can see, I've pretty well maxed out the real estate of this. And the cool thing is, I have everything I need without having a lot of redundancies. As you can see, I have a few different options of overdrive and fuzz and distortion. I also have a compressor. The conger also has a filter on it. I have a volume pedal, I have a tuner, I have a pitch octave pedal, I have a delay, a reverb, I have a favorite switch, and I have a looper. I mean, I can do a lot of stuff with this pedal board in a pretty compact form factor. It was important for me to not put every pedal that I own on this board because I don't use every pedal on every gig and I have some redundancies. I have multiple fuzzes, I have a huge tremolo, I have other dirt pedals and I have an HX stomp. I have all kinds of stuff that I don't really need all on one board because it creates those redundancies. So in this more minimal approach, I found the mono board to be a great platform to work with. It's really light, even with the pedals on it, but especially without. It's got that really clean black anodized aluminum look. It's very, very strong. I mean, this, this board, even for being this thin, is very sturdy. There is no flex with this board, and it still remains to be a very light pedal board. I think another important thing is the price point of this board used to you would buy the pedal board for $179 and have to have a case separate. Now for some people that's not a big deal because you've got a few hundred bucks to spend on a board, but I found that to be pretty high. However, when I bought the board, it also came with the case. And the case is actually the Mono Club 
2.0, which is their accessory case, but as it turns out, also fits this board perfectly. Now I think this is an excellent case. It's very sturdy, very robust, which is one of the things that I love about mono cases in general and works really well. The great thing is if you need a hard case, this fits easily in quite a few different size Pelican cases and you have a great accessory case to boot or just a gig bag for around town. While I wouldn't regularly tour with this and have this thrown in maybe the back of a trailer or something that's got a lot of heavy gear moving around, I would have no problem gate checking this if I had to and I certainly wouldn't have a problem with throwing it in the overhead bin of an airplane. I think it's a really great case, I think it's really robust, and I want to go through a few more details about why I like these two in particular. So if you know anything about mono creators, you know that they are known for their cases. The pedal boards are a newer venture, they also make some other accessories and products, but truly the cases are the cream of the crop. As you can see with this one, it is a good compact size, obviously again fits the pedal board perfectly. It has these thick rubber feet that you can see here. It's really hard rubber. It's got these big thick triangles which also help make the case stand up on its own very easily. It can kind of grip into the floor and it protects the bottom of the case. Now this also has the same, I don't really know how to describe it, it's almost slightly rubbery, this really thick bottom piece like the flyby has on it and that does a really good job of keeping the appearance clean and obviously you're not worried about ripping any kind of fabric when you sit it down. Now the other thing that I love about mono cases is honestly the overall aesthetic. As you can see this design is really clean, it's just a logo and it has a tag here. It also has these big thick points here that you can hook on the included shoulder strap if you want to carry it over your shoulder. And it has this very heavy duty reinforced handle. As you can see here, it's got really thick rivets and it works really well. Just like the backpack, it's very heavy duty. I could really throw this thing around and I'm not at all worried about the handle coming off. So the second thing is the compartments. Now when I bought this, I actually thought it just had the one big compartment, but it does have, in fact, a outside pocket as well. It has this front compartment, which as you can see here, also includes the shoulder strap if you're so inclined to use it. And it's got this really nice interior, just like the flyby. And it's also got this nice little small pocket here, which I find really handy. As you can see, I keep a few things in here that are kind of essential for any gig. I have a couple of different gauges of strings for my electrics. I also have a pair of string cutters. I also keep my slide in here. I keep a few different picks and a pen and a few things like that. So overall, just a good little pocket to have in there to kind of keep other things separate that are smaller that you don't want getting lost down in the big compartment. Now, the other thing is the inside of the case. Again, really robust, really thick zippers, feels really sturdy. And you can see a couple of different things. One, the sides are really thick and reinforced, which is nice. It is still a gig bag. It's not a Pelican case, so it does have some movement, obviously. But they are very rigid. They hold their shape well. I've been using this for about three months now, and even with pretty regular use in leaving the house and things like that, it's held its shape really well and stands up great. It also has this velvety kind of top, which is really nice and soft on the pedals. And when you see how thick it is with the pocket on the front, it's got a lot of protection where you need it, which is above your pedals, protecting the foot switches and things like that. Now, the thing that I always tell people about pedal boards when they're worried about them is that your pedals were made to be stepped on. They can take some abuse. Now, I don't think you should abuse your gear, but it is something to consider when you're worried about babying it. If you had this case and this was all you had, I think you could still easily do any gig with it. Now, let's talk about the pedal board itself. So the thing I love about Mono Creators is that their minimalist approach and aesthetic really ties over into everything they do. 
from their logo to their cases, everything is really well thought out. You have a lot of things that make a lot of sense and small practical innovations that are not reinventing the wheel, but again, we're talking about something that just needs to hold pedals so it doesn't have to be super complicated. And that's part of the reason I love this board. Again, I've got pedals and everything already on here, but you can see how the cutouts make a ton of sense where cable management is considered. There's a lot of things about this board that just really make it great. My biggest problem with certain pedal boards has really been twofold. One, they either don't have enough options for cable routing, or two, they've just got big open slats and that can kind of change how you're able to place pedals. But I think Mono has struck a nice balance with having enough cutouts without it being too much. I also think the overall design of the board makes a ton of sense. Having slightly more elevation than other similar boards is great because if needed, I could fit entire pedals underneath this thing. As you can see with my power supply, there is a lot of clearance and with the junction box that I have built underneath as well. It's also a very clean aesthetic overall, simple logo cut out on this side if you need to be able to access cables but everything is really easy to get to. I think that they did a really good job with this and is an overall really well built product. So while I do think this is a great product and is my favorite pedal board that I've ever owned, it's still not perfect. Now, these are really small things when considering looking at buying one, but if you're watching this, you probably are looking at buying one of these at pedal boards or something similar, or at least interested in it. So I wanna point out a couple of things that I'd kinda of wish I had known before I bought it, or at least things that I wish I had thought through. The only thing, and this is kind of a wash for me because it's kind of a plus and kind of a minus, is the flanges here on the sides. As you can see, it's not completely flat on the bottom. I do believe this is to add rigidity to the overall structure. And one thing I do like about it is because it's easy to just reach your fingers underneath and hold the board like this. The thing I don't like about it is that I built myself a custom junction box. And as you can see, I had to actually put some dual lock underneath it here to get it to this height where the jacks themselves would sit up correctly. Now, to be fair, I had built this junction box for a different pedal board and then when I bought this one, mounted it underneath. Had I thought through it a little bit more, I could have gone with a slightly larger case size for the box, drilled the holes a little lower and it wouldn't have been a problem. But it is something to consider if you're thinking about having a junction box underneath or maybe even a pedal underneath. You'll just want to make sure the jacks will clear. If not, having some dual lock and as you can see, I also have it zip tied on. It's not going anywhere and it works really well, but that is something to consider. Again, I think it's kind of a wash because it is easy to hold the pedal board like this. So just know that going into it. The only other big con that I had at least when I purchased it, was that the case was sold separately. Now, the dealer that I bought it from, shout out to Russo Music, who I have no affiliation with and is not sponsoring this video, but had great customer service. They were pairing the mono case with it as a free add-on. Now, however, mono has announced that the case, the pedal boards will all come with their corresponding case size. So. If you find a dealer that's still doing them separately, you could probably mention that to them and you would get the case for free. Or if you buy them from Mono, that's something to consider. So my biggest consideration initially was price. Now, obviously, that's not a problem. So again, small qualm with that, but overall, I think a great pedal board and a very worthy consideration. So guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you if you are looking at any of the Mono Creator stuff, whether their cases or their pedal board. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you quickly. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Every subscriber helps me make these videos. So thank you so much for your support. If you're interested in some of the other things that I do or keeping more up to date with just what happens in my 
my life on a regular basis. Follow me on Instagram, which I will have linked in the description below as well. Hope you guys have a good one, and I will see you in the next video.